<coughs> Hi folks. <coughs> Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it very much. I was watching a gentleman's video today and he had his big library in the background and all his antiques and his hundreds of books and stuff. And I thought, he must be really smart. <laughs> I don't have any books behind me. So, uh, one of the things that always comes up is cherry picking. And I just have given up on it because everybody cherry picks. Everybody has John 3.16. They forget John 3, 36, I think it is, where it says you got to obey. They forget to take it in context. Uh, we all have our favorite verses. And there are verses that literally stand alone when it comes to detail and information. Okay, And so and everybody takes and puts Christmas cards or whatever cards, and they put different verses on them, even though Christmas is a pagan holiday and stuff. But uh, I wanted to share this here uh, I don't know how to say this but it's like there was a time in my life when communicating with the Holy Spirit was a common thing see where back him leading me to Bible school him preparing me him preparing me when I got married uh, the first year or so of school preparing me that I wasn't ready for one of his daughters that I needed to get rid of my male chauvinist pig hood stuff <laughs> and I still had a lot of pride and a lot of all that stuff and so uh, and then I even followed him down and moved down here because I know he called us to a small city and a small town and a lot of that changed and I had insecurities and I had all kinds of other things that uh, I didn't know how to deal with and I had kids coming and you know life gets snowballing and 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 so I don't there's no excuse but Right now, I would say in the last months or year, I want to say that I'm back to that place where my heart, I believe I can honestly say my heart is following the Spirit. My heart wants to obey the Father. I want to seek out and share truth with other people. I have a hard time doing my business because I'd rather study and go out and share. Um, I, the, the property I need to paint the house I need to do a lot of things but it's like it's it's hard because my desire now is back when the same as I had it when I was willing to give up my job give up my home where I was living uh, we had three guys that was rooming in a house so I did some remodeling and stuff like that and uh, then I went off to school because I was single and I thought, Father, I, I want to do whatever you want me to do. You know, I'll be available and stuff. And so it's funny how we look at the different phases in our lives. And uh, those are times that I cherish. And so now where I'm at after I've had the purpose to forgive myself for the time I rebelled against it for all the problems I caused Yahweh. And also this one guy that uh, the video I was talking about, he's the best I've ever seen with somebody explaining the historical of how Jesus and how the letter J came in and how Yeshua or Yahshua, uh, which is Joshua, jo yeah. <laughs> and how the different names of our Messiah, and I like calling him by his Hebrew name. If I'm over there, the Jews, even my German friends and my Australian friends, of course they speak English. So Germans, even though write in German, they'll still put Marty in there, you know. And so, but I think I've got my priorities right. I, the first five books of Torah is my primary source of information and standard. Then the Psalms and then the Gospels the, and then the prophets, I mean the prophets and stuff, you know. And so... Uh, I'm understanding, I'm trying to read my writing here, many verses, yeah, stand a little bit. I'm understanding the importance of trusting the author. See, I will post something on Facebook or someplace and people will disagree with me. And then they go off on to other topics. It's like, no, I study out a topic. I study out the words that pertain to that entire topic. Any verse that is throughout Old and New Testament that pertain to a subject, I try to, to see that. That helps me to understand 
exactly what it is. The same way with a word. Uh, some of the people on there are excellent at finding the original words and going back to the codex and stuff and all that there and they can sort out the words with the scribes and a lot of times our English language is just so poor that we don't have the correct words to translate some of this stuff. And so that's why questioning the Bible, the Holy Bible, and looking at it to find Yahweh's words, our Heavenly Father's words, are in there. See? And the credibility of the author is the one that I'm seeing that he or she, or well, most of the time he, is sharing of what our Heavenly Father said throughout history. There's a, a, a ribbon of truth all the way through it. And I'm going to share with you the chain of authority. This is Numbers 11, chapter 11, verses 16 and 17. You'll, this is be real familiar. So Yahweh said to Moses, Gather for me 70 of the elders of Israel, whom you know to be the elders of the people and officers over them. Bring them to the tent of the meeting and have them take their places there with you. I will come down and talk with you there. I will take some of my of the spirit that is on you and put it on them, and they shall bear the burden of the people along with you so that you will not bear it all by yourself. And see, I am starting to see and understand more and more or perceive how the Spirit, even when we talk about the Holy Spirit, is not a separate entity. It's not a triune thing. It's the Father imparting His Spirit, His wisdom, His stuff into us. And see, so I look right here, I'm using Moses as an authoritative figure. Okay, now I'm going to go to the next authoritative figure in John 14, 25 and 26. I cherry picked this verse to get my point across. <laughs> you can check the context if you want. I, Yeshua, have said these things to you while I am still with you. But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. See, I've got my chain of command or my chain of authority now established as I'm studying the scripture or the writings by the different authors. 1 John 2, 26 and 27. I, John, write these things to you concerning those who would deceive you. Again, I'm looking at him sitting wherever he's sitting or someone else is writing for him because maybe he doesn't know how to write. I, I'm not, that's not the issue. It's like the credibility of John. At his time period in his life, there were deceivers. There were disciples of deceivers. There were false teachers going out among people. See, verse 27. As you know, the anointing that you receive from him abides in you. And so you need, so you do not need anyone to teach you. But the anointing teaches you about all things and is true and is not a lie. And just as it has taught you, abide in him. Abide in him in Christ's teaching, if you read the context. See, it's not that we can't learn from other people, but what I realized, I was living off the church. I was living off the energy of the pastor. I was living off, uh, you know, do not forsake the assembling of yourselves. Now I'm living off of seeking the Holy Spirit, seeking the Father's word, his ways. See, I'm learning to do this. It is lonely. But it's rewarding. Praise the Lord. We get out of line and deceived when we stray from the soul teacher and his teachings from the Father. See, so I am, have learned, and I've learned from different people, different tips and different things, or people have pointed things out to me and said, hey, look at this, examine this, see what you think about this, Marty. And the soul teacher, when I establish the Torah, the first five books, and the Gospels of my Lord and Messiah, the Anointed One, then those are my standards in which I live by. And all other authors and all other things, I base off of those that chain of authority. 
John 12, verse 49 and 50, For I have not spoken of my own, but the Father who sent me has himself given me a command about what to say and what to speak. And I know that his commandment is eternal life. What I speak, therefore, I speak just as the Father has told me. The modern church, this is Marty speaking, the modern church has gone off of the Messiah's teachings. They are now following a Pharisee's teachings, just as Jesus warned us not to do. It's easy when you're blinded and they're told that this is God's word and everything in it is inspired and of him. Listen to this. God, Yahweh, always gives us a choice throughout all of history, throughout my whole life. He's always given me a choice, which sometimes is a test. Choose who will you follow. And this is just a side note that I, I wrote on here that today I had, uh, hopefully I don't smell because uh, I was out burning brush today because uh, there was no wind and stuff. And so, um, if, let's just say what if, what if I saved by grace through faith alone is really true? So wouldn't it be still okay for me and other people to want to keep his commandments to obey him and to live rightly before him you see what i'm saying people say oh you're trying to, to get to heaven by works why am i doing that out of love the first two commandments to love the father with all your heart mind soul and strength and love your neighbor as yourself that's the motivation for keeping the rest of the commandments how does our Heavenly Father know that you and I are obeying Him when we say he, we don't have to obey the commandments? We just have to love Him and love others. It's very clear in 1st, 2nd, 3rd John and James that keeping the laws that apply to us as sojourners, the 23 or 32 or somewhere in that area of the laws. Does that make sense? If we're really saved by grace, why are you people fighting against us? Because if you really are saved by grace through faith and not of works, then I've got it made. But if what I'm sharing, if my Heavenly Father, through His Spirit, anoints me and says, I want you to obey me, to show, show me your love. I want you to obey my commands to show that I love Him. Then I should do that. Praise Yahweh. Thank you so much. If this video helps, please spread it around. But I'm getting more and more secure in what I'm sharing because I've been being tested for, I've been, yeah, something like that, for the last three to four years. The emotional roller coaster for me is getting lesser and lesser because the stability of the proven facts of what Yahweh, our Heavenly Father, has said. I can trust him by what he says. And his son verifies what he says. And his son's apostles and brothers verify what he says. And Paul wants you to follow him as he follows Christ. We have a choice. The Father gave us a choice in the scripture. If you believe it's the word of God and if you believe it's inspired with God, you better listen to what the Father says. Because once you study what He says and what His Son says, you will clearly see who the deceiver is and who the test is. But it's your choice. He gave us free will. He's an incredible Heavenly Father and Creator. Father, I am so absolutely thrilled. It's like I go up and down on my videos, Father. But Lord, uh, you know I'm dealing with some family stuff right now. And uh, Yeshua said, do not go to the altar until I make it right with people. And sometimes dealing with family is incredibly the hardest thing in the world because you, you, they have a history of backbiting you and stabbing you no matter what you do to try to get, make things right with them. So Father, please help me to see and know what to do 
give other people wisdom who's been shunned by their families, who can, you cannot meet the expectations of their families, of our families. They, they just refuse, and the only person who would listen to me and just literally accept me for who I am was my mom. I could talk to her about Paul. I could talk to her about pros and cons of the Bible. And she would study it and look it up. You know that, Heavenly Father. Please, Father, anoint those and encourage those who are seeking you. You will not let us down. I know that. In Yeshua's precious name. Amen.